We get so many DMs because we do go to Disney quite a bit that I figured why not answer them here in a vlog, even though this isn't my normal gig here on YouTube. This is why we were girls. Who wants a bag? Alan Taylor, little lady with a great challenge in front of her. This is Flo! Maybe Flo! <laughs> she wins the world championship. And the winner's circle for that cowgirl. Alan Taylor will win. She's riding an amazing horse out of Baby Flo. One of the babies for Baby Flo. For Flo to the Flo. Flo, Flo. Hush, buddy. Hush, buddy. What's up, Flomies? I'm taking you to Disney. So we're going to meet some friends in Orlando that you guys haven't seen before that stood up um, in our wedding and we're going to host them to kind of like a few days in Disney. Mullet game strong. This one, I believe, is going to overlook Golden Oak, which is such a big deal because that's the whole, like, manifestation part of this. But walk into a closet. The coolest part here is the TV in the middle. Like, we don't need that, but it's super cool. They're the classic. And then the bathtub. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> and then the shower. These are baller. All right, meat and potatoes of the room. Greatest bed ever. And we co-sleep, so plenty of room. And they put little glasses out for Brand. They're so cute, I love it. And here's the view. And this is overlooking the Golden Oaks properties over here, all over there, which is just yeah. so cool. Wow. We've done this many ways and used um, points at Holiday Inn to come in and have a vacation there. The Holiday Inn experience is a lot different than the Four Seasons experience. I have to say out of all of the experiences, my very favorite is the art of animation because the Skyliner comes into there. It's got this Disney themed everything. It just kind of, envelops the entire trip in Disney, where here feels more like a vacation, not complaining, but this is more of a place where I wish we had a little bit more time at the resort to take in massages and spa things and by the pool, which we're gonna go to the pool today. We came in early, um, but those are things that at Four Seasons, if you're not a rope dropper fan at you know the parks where you're up at 7 a.m., up at 6 a.m. and you stay there until midnight, this may not be worth the dollars um, for you if you are a rope dropper. If you are one of those people um, that doesn't like to get up super early on vacation and then you don't stay until the fireworks, you'll probably enjoy this place a little bit more. You'll enjoy the room service. You'll enjoy um, having a really relaxed character breakfast here. But, and the character breakfast is awesome if your kid isn't um, you know, terrified of the characters, which he is. I don't blame him. It's an overgrown rat. Like, I get it in people clothes. Like. I'm, I'm not a fan either of seeing those walk around. Um, but this place is really, especially if you're using points, it makes it feel like you're on a tropical island because it is kind of far out. But 
my manifestation of staying at a place right across the street from Golden Oaks. Obviously, it would be really cool for us as a family to have a home in Golden Oaks. I'm dreaming really big with that Lambo pulled up in the front, but the housing here starts at a million and a half plus and you get preferential treatment at the parks. You get to um, go earlier and there's a transportation system just for that and the homes um, just have really cool designs and theming. These aren't like, you'll have to look them up online. They're not like, you know, Mickey Mouse shaped houses. We're adults that go to Disney, not Disney adults, and there's a huge difference. So having that right across the street and driving in and out and just envisioning us coming to that as our second home one day would be really cool. Now, I talk a lot about credit card points. The one thing you don't wanna do is start playing the credit card point, point game. If one, you are irresponsible with your finances and you know yourself like that, don't even try it because you need to pay these cards off to a balance of zero every single time you use them. And two, um, the good thing about playing the credit card game is that you will establish really great credit later on for when you wanna buy a home, buy a car, all of those things. But um, don't get in the credit card points thing if you think that you're too irresponsible financially to do that right now. Start small and get a prepaid card where you put your own money on a card and then start earning. But I will talk about that in a whole other vlog. But in the meantime, we're gonna enjoy this beautiful view and go grab some lunch. We'll take you guys with us. Are you excited for the trip? Yeah, are you? Mm-hmm. I know you are. Why do you say that? I told him about a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> Brand is about to change into his little swimsuit. I'm about to change into Rideco. Da-da! Da-da! Da -da. Da -da. Can you say, ta-da! Okay, no park day for us yet, that comes tomorrow. But today we are taking in Disney Springs. It is the cutest, it's free, it's really, really safe for the entire family and I think you guys will absolutely love it. So even if you're just gonna be in Florida for a day, you can't do the whole Disney experience, make sure to come to Disney Springs. I'll show you our favorite and most underrated restaurant right now. Some of my biggest hacks come from having rewards cards and staying in places like this on points. And one of the things I can tell you is if you want to redeem things for something specific like Disney, don't use the Disney rewards card. It's pretty much garbage. Um, I got it, I wanted to see how it would be. I learned very quickly that it's not a great idea dollar for dollar. But since I do already have it, this is a redemption card that I will use and this is good toward my food and um, if you have the Disney Rewards Visa, you get 10% off of purchases over 50 bucks within the park. Um, or if you buy merch or gifts or things like that. So there are a few perks. This redemption card um, we will use to eat all day tomorrow. So we'll have no out-of-pocket expenses for that. My big goal is to one day book the VIP tour where we get to be like put in the express lane on every single ride and taken on tours in the park. It's a bajillion dollars an hour. But my goal is at some point to do that. And I'm gonna fulfill that here and show you guys the whole thing when I finally get that done. But it's a whole lot of dollars. And we're gonna do that at some point because it'll be so much fun. Um, but they like have water and snacks for you at the end of every ride and all of those things. Now, I'm gonna show you what's in my saddle sack. So I am taking our new saddle sack. I'm gonna show you what's in the bag of things that I think are necessary. We discovered that if we put the um, grooming tote strap onto the saddle sack that it's pretty glorious as a crossbody bag. I will show you guys that when I wear it tomorrow. And also because the straps are how the straps are, I'm gonna be able to put this directly on top of our um, stroller and hook it there. The great thing about Disney is there's no theft. I mean, it's you don't have to worry about any of your stuff. Um, here's this fragrance-free um, anti-chafing balm. There's another brand that's really great that I have as well. I think these are absolutely necessary. So this is the fuel rod. You can scan these. We've had these for probably three years. I carry two of these and you can plug in any kind of device. Um, and the first time you buy it, I think it's 30 bucks and it gives you 
all the cords for the various different types of phones. You can charge these yourself, or what I do is just make sure that I have them in my Disney bag ready to go. And then I take them and first thing I will um, get brand new ones. So it's free to get brand new ones that are fully charged and that's how I roll. This time I'm gonna take Dramamine with the head injury that I have. I do have a little bit of like a vertigo moment um, and I really wanna enjoy Guardians of the Galaxy on Epcot day. Um, we are taking electrolytes with us because it's super hot here. And then in this bag I have, hang on one second. In this bag I have my wipes, my diapers, sunglasses, all sorts of things, and my redemption card. It holds everything. One more thing, and this is borrowed for like a year and a half. This is the, however you wanna pronounce that, sling that you put over and it's got a little seat for your little. So you put it on like this and while you're standing in a queue, you can pop your baby right here. I've tried one of those, um, I think it's called Tush or something. And I have that one also, Jesse has it too, that you put around your waist and it's got like pockets and all that. It's so cumbersome. And like, you're trying to look cute and it's trying to be a vibe and you have this giant thing on you. It's just, it's just not the move. Plus my baby likes to get up and down and up and down and up and down like other kids. So I don't wanna wear this whole big thing if I don't have to. Plus I can run this through my saddle sack and just keep it as like the crossbody um, holder for my entire day. So it weighs nothing. You can barely see it because it's black, so it's awesome. It's park day number one. I'm so glad you're with me. Let's go check out the hidden gems inside of Disney World. Okay, this is a whole other vlog, but using um, Standby Skipper in conjunction with Disney Plus is the way you can get like everything that you want to ride in a day. We totally think that it's worth it to spring for all the stuff and things because we don't want to stand in line for three hours and have a toddler that melts down. And at the end of the day, if we could pay 15 bucks to skip that part, we absolutely would. So we just do it from the start. Okay, so we are super lucky because I've got my friend Carly and Dave with us and Carly um, interned here and worked here. And so she's got fun facts that I'm gonna steal as my own as we're doing this. She said a few things. One, you're never very far from a trash can in Disney. And so everywhere you look, there's a trash can, which is really great. Sorry, I'm momming so hard. As you walk toward the castle, the buildings get ever so a little bit taller as you go. So when you walk toward the castle, it seems more grand and the walk seems more grandioso. And as you walk home, the walk seems shorter because the buildings get shorter as you walk out. That's so cool. Hey, first ride of the day, Big Thunder Mountain. We booked a 9 a.m. lightning lane using standby skipper, so let's go. Our park strategy is a little bit different because we don't mind zigzagging across the entire park because that means more steps and we're always on a fitness journey. Plus, we wanna grab some snacks while we're here, so we don't mind. So our next ride is gonna be Tron all the way across the park by Space Mountain in Tomorrowland. We'll take you guys along. Okay, so we are deep inside of Tron. Lightning Lane was super worth it because the line is insane. Yeah. And we won't have a camera for the ride. It's got like a riding horses set up. It's a riding motorcycle. Um, if you, for some reason, aren't comfortable in that position, they do have other seating on the very back of each of the things, but they let you try out the seat before so you know if you're gonna be comfortable in that, and that way they can accommodate you for all of those things. So, ride number two, here we go. What did you think about Tron? It's number two to the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, it's, I, it's 10 out of 10. Don't do it without a lightning lane, you'll roast. They don't have a good cover um, for if you're standing outside. So lightning lane it up, amazing ride. Okay, ride number three is going to be Buzz Lightyear. Brand can go on this one. There's no height requirement, it's super fun. We've even gotten stuck on this ride for like 15 minutes and it was one of the most fun things that's ever happened. Definitely worth the lightning lane, it's over an hour wait, but we just grabbed a snack and now we're ready to go ride with the Buzz. So 
super easy, super cash schedule when you have everything planned out. Um, but we are gonna put our stroller over by Carousel Progress and we're gonna ride the People Mover afterwards. That'll be our like fourth ride. It's not really a ride, but it's just um, a good way to take a minute off your feet and just kind of hang out. I can even get my baby down on Carousel Progress because it's a dark ride. So ride number three, Buzz Lightyear, here we go. gonna crush. Here we go. Okay, we're gonna try to get in 10 rides, which it is impossible basically when you do sit down service or do table service. This is a Lady and the Tramp themed restaurant called Tony's. It's right when you come in the main entrance on the right side. It's got a beautiful, beautiful patio in the back. It's one of the few places for the adults that serve alcohol. So we are going to do something really, really light for our entree and then all split the Italian strawberry shortcake. To make the next five rides, it's going to be a little challenging. We have Space Mountain, Haunted Mansion, Pirates, Jungle Cruise, and, and teacups. Teacups. That's what's left. So wish us luck. We're in no rush. We will mill around here all night until we get that done. So here we go. Hi! <laughs> Are you excited? He's making cookies for your belly. Look, he's going to make cookies. <gasps> Look! He's gonna make cookies. He's so sweet. <gasps> okay, here we go. Oh, look at that. Wow. Now he dipped it in the red stuff and he's gonna put it over there and he's gonna put the two yellow buttons on it. <gasps> wow. Okay. Made her. Luke made it. I just her. cried over Luke in the confectionery giving Brand a cookie. We were filming and <laughs> showing and he gave him a cookie and I cried over it. Like so it looks stupid. Um, that's like the magic of Disney is that you get to see humans being cool humans. So anyway, I'll show you guys around the confectionery. It's beautiful. The people are beautiful. Hi, how are you? <laughs> All the things are so beautiful. Wow. Yeah, wow. Hey, you, got a you got a cookie, mister. Ride yeah. number six, we are going to Pirates. And this is obviously one of our very favorite rides. If you guys have little ones, they're gonna love it. It's just so nostalgic. It's such a great ride. Everybody in the family is gonna love it. It's fantastic. It is a dark ride, which means that my baby most likely will go down for a nap, which I love. Um, because when he gets a little you know, overtired, overstimulated, I can take him on a dark ride and get him down. Just a tip for traveling um, with your toddlers. If you've never been to Disney by chance, the smell of the water in Pirates is also super familiar. If you've been on it once, it brings back so many great memories. It is called bromine and um, it is used to make the water smell a certain way. You will notice throughout the park that when in rides like Pirates, there's a dog and in um, Carousel of Progress, there's a dog. You'll notice the same dog. And living with the land. Living with the land same has dog. the same dog. So sometimes they have a um, Johnny Depp look-alike Jack Sparrow running around here on the stage behind me, and he's pretty great. So it's super fun. This is one of those rides that if you don't have a lightning lane, you will still really enjoy the queue because it's super themey and it's AC'd in here. This is a great ride. Hang on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, we gotta go this way. Come on, ladies. This is a great ride that stays air conditioned. It's really, really comfy in here and the line is really cute.
there are tons of cut throughs, especially from Adventureland into um, Fantasyland, Frontierland. There's a lot of different ways that you can get through different places. Look, guys. Oh, there's a little squirrel. That's cute. <laughs> If you didn't know, Splash Mountain got shut down and it's coming back with Tiana's Bayou. So that's really cool because they're getting in new restaurants, new things in the Frontierland area. Super sad to see Splash Mountain go, but I'm not a water ride girly like pirates, but you don't get very wet on pirates. So now we're headed for ride number seven, Haunted Mansion, which I would venture to say is our absolute favorite. Halloween and Christmas are my two very favorite holidays. And um, the Haunted Mansion is just, I don't know, it's super nostalgic. I keep saying that today, but um, Haunted Mansion is another one of those that you just have to go to, especially everything's already decorated for Halloween, so they go super all out in the mansion in a bunch of the different scenes. A super fun fact about the Haunted Mansion is that Leo de Tombs, the face inside the ball, um, that's like saying a seance or whatever, she was actually a costume designer as an Imagineer, and her daughter Kim, um, they, they had Leota come in and do the, um, the face for that. Someone else voiced it over, but they were all Imagineers working on different projects. That's not what they did for a living. They popped in to do that, and she has since passed, but her daughter and um, her grandchildren that she was survived by, they come in just to see Grandma, so when she said she hears the little voice say, hurry back. It's not creepy to her, it's her mom. And um, I don't know, she really likes to come and people think that she's weird when she comes in and wants to see her mom as a ghost because they don't know the full story. But anyway, that's super cool. So that's uh, ride number seven. I think we're gonna make it to 10. No. Is this haunted room actually stretching? Thank you. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Other thing is, if you've already caught a parade that day, skip the parade and go get some quick service snacks because everybody leaves to go watch the parade and you can go get a quick service snack like that. Okay, ride number eight. This is Winnie the Pooh. Last time this scared Fran to death, so we're hoping that he's a little bit um, more adapted and learned a little bit more and likes this a little bit better. If not, we're just like making a horrible choice and gonna upset him all day. Um, really crossing our fingers for Teacups and Space Mountain after this. So we're just, and Jungle Cruise. So we're gonna do 11? I believe we're gonna do 11. Okay, ride number nine, the Teacups. This is a great kid ride. Bran just got to see um, Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. So now we're going here. Um, you will get sick if you are riding with somebody that tries to be crazy um, with spinning this teacup. So if you're not into that, make sure you've got the right person or take somebody's kid so that they will be very slow about how they do things. Ride 10, we made it. Um, technically, this isn't a ride. This is Hall of Presidents, which is also a great nap zone in some AC. There's people napping. Great nap zone. Um, but we have a friend that's never seen this before, so we're gonna go on Hall of Presidents. And it's just a sit there, like sit through robotics thing, which is really, really cool. Um, I highly recommend it. I love it in here. And then we are gonna hit some more rides. So we still haven't hit Jungle Cruise, and we still haven't hit Space Mountain. So we continue to go on the lightning lane and see if anything clears up. But for right now, this is a good little break and then we'll go there. Wow. Just like I thought it would, I got Brand down for a nap in the Hall of Presidents. And so now we're gonna go wait in the traditional line at Jungle Cruise because there's no lightning lanes available. And this is my third one of the day because we've been filming all day and run out of juice. Another one of our like secret hacks thing is to ride a ride that's highly desirable while the fireworks are going on. The fireworks are at 9.20, everybody starts lining up at about 
We're on Peter Pan's, Peter Pan's flight right now. The sign says 40 minutes. The guy at the front, I said, is it really 40 minutes? And he said, yep. And we have been in line for about nine minutes and we're about to get on the road. It's, it's right here, about to get on the ride. So anyway, typically toward the end of the night, they lie about the times that they come on and two, um, they will discourage you from jumping on during the fireworks because that's typically when everybody can catch a little break. It's 10 p.m. on the dot. Thank you so much for spending day one at the park with us. We are like Alex's full dad mode activated because we, uh, the Four Seasons picks up at 10.15 and we still have to do that out of the park, monorail across the parking. That's the only lengthy part is like, there's no way to get dropped off at the front of Magic Kingdom. That'll be different tomorrow. We're back for day two. Epcot, see you in a snap. All right, we're back park day two, and we're at Epcot. We are here for um, a good time, not a long time. Epcot is not a place with a ton of rides, but we are here at the International Food and Wine Festival, which is really great. Although we're not huge park snackers, but today I'm gonna try to go around and get a few more things than I normally do. Got a stroller, we got our saddle sack. Still the best thing I've ever put on a stroller, so super excited about that. And gonna show you guys our new tees that are coming really soon. Ride number one is gonna be Soren. I did use Standby Skipper again today. The best thing that it did for me was book our very first ride. Other than that, I don't know if I'm gonna use it much today because it kind of gets in my way a little bit. Um, but I did get it booked and then I booked individual lightning lane for Guardians of the Galaxy and waiting until 10.55 to be able to book Remy and Frozen because you have to book, you know, you can't book everything at once. Okay, ride number one, here we go. If you have a fear of heights type moment, or your kids do a flying, this is not the one for you, but it's so calm and relaxing. It's a perfect ride one. The best part about this ride is that there's an area where the kiddos can play and be in AC with access to bathrooms and food and all the things that, so they could just lay and play while we ride our switch. <laughs> one of our favorite places is the San Angel um, restaurant in Not here. One of our favorites. It's the favorite. My favorite. Okay, and so the water ride, um, Grand Fiesta, runs right beside us. You can see people on it kind of right now. And we're gonna go get on that ride afterwards. But Mexico is right here. It looks like not much from the outside, but when you come inside, it's got a tequila cave right when you walk in the door to the right. And then when you come in here, um, it's got great food, which is obviously gone now. Ride number two is Ron Fiesta Tour. This one's so good. So if you can get a reservation at San Angel and eat here, it's incredible. But Ron Fiesta Tour is like a super throwback 90s ride. I think it's a small world, um, but shorter and not quite so like old. Um, it's a 90s kind of ride, super easy. The whole family can ride it. It's on the water. The ambiance is great. The line always moves fast. If it says it's a 15 minute wait, it's for sure not. Um, it's a five minute wait. It's like living with the land. Um, this is one of my favorites. Ride number three is Frozen. This one is really great because we can all go on it. It's got AC. Norwegian boss water. The boss water outside. France has that Evian piece if you're a water snob. And Norwegian chocolate here. So yeah, we really like it here. The lightning lane is even really long. So the lightning lane is 100% worth it. But don't be uh, surprised when you have to wait to get on the ride. We're going to go to Ride number three, four, four. This is uh, Nemo, and after Nemo is Turtle Talk with Crush, and it's the cutest thing ever. If you have time, go to Turtle Talk with Crush. Yeah, it's like a live comedy show. Thing. A lot like uh, Monsters Lab Four. Yeah, well yeah. done. More than 28 million tons of bananas are eaten annually, making it the most popular fruit in the world. Mm. Stop momentarily. 
For your safety, remain seated at all times. It's park day three and we are gonna go park hop today. We're gonna do Animal Kingdom this morning so that we can hit the safaris while the animals are out and they're eating and doing all the stuff and things. And then we're gonna hit Hollywood Studios a little bit later tonight. Brandon's behind me playing the drums on the dresser. But I hope you guys have had so much fun thus far. There's so many hacks and things um, around Animal Kingdom. But just to note, we have scaled it back quite a bit on outfits and how much makeup we're wearing all the stuff and things because animal kingdom for some reason is like the hottest park in the world so it's a hot sweaty place we only stay there for a few hours they've got a really great kids area and lots of like exploratory things that kids can do not quite old enough for brand right now so we're gonna do the things we love and get out of that park and head over to hollywood studios as quickly as possible because hollywood studios is just all right, let's go. You're gonna have some grazing animals like wildebeest and antelope that work very hard to keep the grass down. Even the predators are important out here because they will make sure there aren't too many animals as opposed to the round hooves that we are used to seeing. Those allow them to nest that that is a Maasai giraffe. However, that coat pattern will be unique to each individual giraffe. There are no two that are the same, kind of like your fingerprint. The hidden gem of Expedition Everest is that it has a single rider line that I would almost venture to say is as fast or faster than the lightning lane. We're in the lightning lane right now, we rarely get lightning lane for this ride because the single rider is so great, but we wanted to try it today and see if it was faster. I'm gonna say it's 50. It's good for the odd sized groups. Yeah, this is by far Alex's favorite. Zero AC, if you're zero AC if you're single rider, but in here, um, in the lightning lane, we're getting some AC, so. <laughs> <Pit stains. laughs> I'm just airing myself out. I'm a huge Avatar fan. Absolutely love it. Love, love, love the Avatar Avatar part of the park. It is dreamy. Navi River Journey is my favorite ride. Probably because I haven't ever ridden Flights of Passage, um, just because being pregnant and then having the baby with us after that. And then um, this is typically our last park. So I don't try to get anything like right at the beginning of the morning at 8 a.m. So I'll get on it one day. We always love a park hop moment to Hollywood Studios. The problem with park hopping to Hollywood Studios is that you're gonna have a hard time getting on Tower of Terror. Hey, let me show you Alex's uh, blood pressure. That is heart rate. Heart rate, sorry, heart rate. Before My rest ride. thing is 56. <laughs> getting into an elevator. This launch. <laughs> why do I voluntarily do this? I don't know why I do this now. <laughs> <laughs> the Twilight Zone. There are children on this. There are children on this. <laughs> Who put their children? Who put their children on this? Oh yeah. <laughs>
are going to a restaurant that we've never been to that's apparently like the Disney version of Dick's Last Resort, where they kind of talk a little crap to you. It's themed as like, this is your aunt's place and you're just kind of barging in to get some lunch. So they don't like clean up after you. They kind of throw your silverware at you. We'll see. Um, I have a thin candy shell, so I don't know if I'm gonna love this. Um, but we'll check it out. Daddy. Good job, baby. Colors on the transport. Silver in the front. Got it. That was a 20 out of 10 for me. Alex, what do you think? Yeah. That was up there. That was like ratatouille on steroids. Yeah. Yeah. We're all done. All done. Brand. He goes like this. We're all done um, on this amazing Disney trip. This is something that is really super unique trip for us. A really, really small group. Um, we rarely come by ourselves. We, we vowed to do that a little bit more is to come by ourselves a little bit, um, but typically we come with all of our friends, which is our favorite way to travel. It's our favorite way to do things. And um, this way, doing it a little bit different and showing you guys the behind the scenes and sharing it here on the channel. I would say yeah. standby skipper after I was done being really rude about that it would could never be better than us. On day two, when I didn't get in its way, it was better than we could ever book, and then we could just modify around. So we learned yeah. something this trip. Um, we Lightning lane was actually fast this time. Yeah, it was things. actually fast. Um, it was like offensively hot here, and we live where it's 109, so for us to say that, like, Yeah. Tron, 10 out super of 10. good ride, 10 out of 10. Not better than Guardians. No, so it's 10 out of 10 if it's being compared to... Everything. Yeah, like, there's yeah. like probably like five rides that are 10 out of 10. Yeah. I love to say and because. It's more of a theme or a thrill ride. Yeah. That's why it's 10 out of 10 for us, I think. Um, we have not vlogged like this in a really long time, so you guys haven't seen Alex in a while. Um, but he, I am alive. He, <laughs> but he really likes Disney just like I do. Um, not because it's. Well, not Disney adult style. No. You know? But like, it's a theme park and a place to go and like relax, kind of shut off your brain. And that's our well, it's vibe. Nostalgic to the nineties. Wait, say that again. It's nostalgic to the nineties. Yeah. When yeah. things felt a lot more simple. And like a lot of that with Disney is like their futuristic stuff feels really retro now. It feels like it's from the fifties. Yeah. So yeah. it's like it's just really cute and sweet and um and it's still like a game where we can like see how fast we can go to certain things. One day we're gonna do, like, if you guys like the behind the scenes of a bunch of stuff, we are going to hire a VIP tour one day just to say that we did it. Yeah. Um, but we can't have the normal group that we have because there's a limit to how many people you can bring. So um, we'll do that one day, but we will be back. Um, and I hope that you guys are as excited about the Ride Co as we are because we have some very exclusive, very limited drops dropping for people that are going or planning their vacay that can get that vibe um without looking like a full-blown Disney this is just adult. a fun project yeah just a fun passion project of like this is stuff we want to wear so we made enough for you too i hope you guys like it yeah. we are gonna have kids stuff shorts socks um t-shirts hoodies caps all of that good jazz so i hope you guys everything are... in small runs yeah so they'll probably sell out right away but the goal of the brand isn't to like scale it and make it huge. No, nope, it's just, just for fun. We're making fun stuff and yep. we figured you guys will ask us where we got it and we can hit you guys with, if we have it, here it is. Yeah. Um, but that's the whole goal and that was the behind the scenes of this vlog. So I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with us to Disney. I hope you get the chance to come down here and use some of our tips and our hacks. Uh-oh. 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 There's a little bitty boy. I hope you guys get to use some of our tips and hacks and that it's useful to you on your trip. As always, you guys, don't forget to count your blessings, stay consistent, and say thank you to Jesus. See you next time.